Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. The live stream on the main channel has begun, and I've got a ton of stuff to get to. There are tons of questions. I can't get to them all today, so if I don't answer your question, don't think I won't email you back, okay? For several of you, I have emailed you back, and I'm still going to cover your question. And and here's kind of give you guys a, a how I'm starting to do this, because this is starting to get more and more popular as we keep doing it every Saturday, 7 p.m. Pacific time. I'm taking questions that are similar and putting them into one, okay? So here we go. We're going to start out. Oh, by the way, before I start, before I get really get going, two things I really want to say. First off, I want to thank everybody, either everybody that watches this live or if you're watching this afterward, thank you for all of your support both on this channel, the podcast, and the shorts channel. On this main channel, we have reached 10,000 subscribers, which I never thought in a million years I would ever get to. I never thought that it would get this way, and now I have new goals. I want to get to 100,000 and get the word out by the end of this year. The second thing I really want to cover is I want to thank uh, a specific guy because I was reflecting on some things. I was reflecting about the beginnings of this channel. And whether you're watching now or you ever see this in the future, I want to thank Doug Bolter. Doug Bolter, guys, without Doug Bolter, you wouldn't have the Honey Badger here on YouTube. He kind of pushed me at the beginning towards the directions and encouraged me, even as bad as I was, encouraged me um, to keep this going. And so I really want to thank him a lot. Uh, I want to thank uh, my wife, my kids. Uh, I want to thank, uh, thank Glenn Coverman uh, for being supportive of this. Um, He's been an amazing person and uh, a really good person in my life. That all being said, let's get to the questions. First question that I want to cover. Oop, wrong email. Okay. We got to find his original email. His original email was very good. See if we can find this guy's original email because somehow I had it saved and it's so good. I'm like, what the heck, man? Ha! Ah, found it. Okay. We have a 2019 Grand Design Imagine. We are upside down to the tune of $41,000. Come to find out, they actually owe $41,000, okay? We are in our mid-70s. We would be able to trade up to get out from underneath this. And that's a question mark. And gave me his email. So they owe $41,099.91. And you didn't really tell me what you wanted to upgrade to. Okay. So I need more information. And I emailed you that. I do need to know what you want to upgrade to. So... $41,000 isn't bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up, while we're sitting here, I'm going to look up the retail book. Okay. Now the retail book is everything you guys get to see for free on JD Power. Okay, That's not how the banks lend. So it has nothing to do with bank lending. It only has to do with what you can kind of see the what the value kind of would be. So what I'm going to do is... It didn't give me specifics, so I'm going to pick something kind of random with Grand Design. Imagine. So we know it's a 2019. We're going to scroll down here. We're going to go to 2019. 
and we're going to go through all the reflection and solitude and all the BS going on with them lately. And let's just say that it's a, let's call a common floor plan was the 2600 RB. Okay. So if I go and I look at retail book and you can't add anything, guys, do not add any options when doing this. Okay. You, you, it, it, it's, it's horse manure. It's like a, a video game. Okay. The low retail book is fourteen thousand eight hundred, with an average retail of seventeen thousand eight fifty. So realistically, you're upside down. Probably wholesale thirty one thousand dollars. Okay. So here's what you do in that case. There's two things you can do. First thing you can do is find a fifth wheel, a 2023 year model, new, not used, new. And then, or whatever you're upgrading to, even if it's in a motorhome, the bigger the dollar amount, the easier it's going to be to bury 31 grand of negative equity. Now, that being said, when you're that upside down, you're going to have to come up with some kind of cash. You're probably going to have to come up with at least minimum 10% down of the new purchase price. Period. You can have the best credit in the world. And more than likely, let's say you're buying a $100,000 unit, you're going to have to come up with ten grand. There's no real way to bury $31,000, $32,000 in an upgrade without having some sort of cash not a lot but enough okay that being said at the same time when you're bearing thirty one thousand dollars what you're really doing is you're adding three hundred dollars to your next payment so hopefully that makes sense so when you're bearing so let's say you're going to bury twenty thousand dollars of negative equity into your next unit, you're adding minimum $200 to your next payment. Okay, so hopefully it helps you out. And you know who you are if you're doing this. I'm not going to announce your name. That's not fair. Email me the specifics about what you want to upgrade to. Okay. Is there any fr other frame? Is there any other frame problems other than companies that are using the same frame as? It's not the it's not the frame itself, Shay. It's not the frame itself. That's what everybody's misunderstanding. It's the what Grand Design is doing on an engineering scale because everyone uses Lippard, Montana, Cougar, Alliance. All these guys use the same companies for their frames when it comes to fifth wheels. So it's not specific to the frame. And I've explained that to a lot of people in a lot of the videos, especially on the podcast. It's not about the frame itself. It's about what Grand Design is doing to their fifth wheels. And I'm not 100% what, knowing why that's occurring. That was actually a question that I was uh, going to answer. So thank you, Shay. That was actually very cool. You actually got to my second question already. So it's it. even though Grand Design is the only company out there that is having the major problems, it doesn't excuse everybody else because you still have off and on issues uh, with other manufacturers. You're welcome. So it's other, you know, for example, Jayco has had some issues this year, but they're not at the astronomical level of Grand Design. Grand Design is absolutely just horrendous and has been horrendous for the last five years. Uh, reminds me a lot of when Keystone, Montana, and Cougar had their issues back in 06, 07, 08, 09, and 10. Okay? I used to sell against Montana back then. It was real easy to do because they had really bad frame problems. Do they still have them? Once in a blue moon. I just got an email from a guy that actually had a Montana have a problem. But the majority of the people are emailing me and letting me know are all Grand Design fifth wheel owners. Not the travel trailer, just the fifth wheel owners. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out. I'm in a 2021 Columbus 329 DVC. I know that floor plan very well. The camper has been great. I'm so glad I didn't buy a Grand Design. 
I've heard lots of people complain about the Grand Design campers lately. Yeah, Henry, that's very true. And a lot of it has to do with, I'm not going to call it frame flex anymore because there's too many awkward terms about it. I'm just going to say that Grand Design as a whole, in the fifth wheel, not the travel trailer, in the fifth wheel era, are having major construction problems. For everything from frame, wall frames, floors, black tanks, plumbing, electrical. And here's the thing, guys. I'm, I am I actually talked to a friend of mine yesterday who actually has a grand, is a grand design dealer. And I won't mention his name because he's going to get in deep crap for sharing this with me. But what he shared with me is the quality that Grand Design had when they were Grand Design, not Winnebago, is completely different than what it is today. So like 2015-16 was like the prime years Grand Design was really on top of their game. Now, I believe, here's what, here, and here's another thing that I was reminded of. When Winnebago bought Grand Design, they went from last place in the towable market, meaning market share, to first overnight. So imagine they're trying to pump out this stuff. They're not taking the touch. And what I'm afraid of, and this is what I'm really afraid of, Brinkley is the same is is being started by the same dudes. The same group of people are doing Brinkley that started Grand Design. My fear is, is they build it up to a certain point, sell it off to a big corporation, and now what do we got? We got another problem with probably frames and construction, right? So those are things like, my thing is, the only way we're going to solve it is if we just stop buying Grand Design fifth wheels. Okay. Uh, thanks, Larry. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Um the only way it's going to stop is if everybody just stops buying Grand Design fifth wheels. It's the only way you're going to do it, okay? Um, the only way you're going to stop it. And that's because if, if, if they are on the verge of, oh, crap, we haven't sold anything in like five or six months, they're going to have to make decisions that effectively have the quality change. Lance, who was bought out, really great company, bought out by a big corporation, big conglomerate, Watch their sales last year tank because they started cutting corners. And if you're a Lance buyer, you know and expect high quality on every unit. And have all those corners cut ain't a good thing. So now, starting September of last year, they went back to their old way of doing things because they were losing their market share. So that's the only way it's really going to happen is if they lose their market share. All manufacturers can have structural issues. It's about how the manufacturers deal with the issues that matters, especially in this day and age. I, I mostly agree with you, Zachary. Mostly agree with you. I, I think not, every manufacturer has a small percentage compared to the whole. Okay, so how I compare it when I talk on my podcast is... There were, in the last five years, there were over 2 million new RVs built, okay? So the percentage of rigs that have major, and I call them Armageddon issues, okay, are very small. But with grand design lately, it's been a lot bigger of a problem than what is normal. Okay, you are absolutely correct. There are times, and especially toy haulers, because people always overload their toy haulers. They could tell me they don't, but I know the majority of people are going to overload their toy hauler. So you can imagine they're having worse time overall than the entire toy hauler industry combined. And that's a problem. There's always issues with cars, always issues with boats, always issues with anything that moves on the road at high speed or moves on the water at high speed. Nothing is built perfectly, and there's always bad apples on the tree. But this is a lot of bad apples. This is almost a bad tree, and that's what's scary, okay? 
Yeah, you're doing. Yeah, I, Larry, you have one a, a really good coach. You and I've talked about that before. You have some really good, a really really good coach. Okay, I want to take a timeout from a, a um, um, an actual question, and I want to read this because this actually touched me. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but my wife lost her son. Um, God, let's see. So that's November of 2010. So we're 13. 13 months, 13 years, three months, um, since her son passed away. Okay. Uh, shout out to you, Grace. Um, and this email really kind of touched me and I can tell that I was very emotional for this person to send me this email. And it says, I would like to thank you. I've been watching and digging into your videos you helped me you helped saved me from making a life-changing mistake the video about losing a son really made me look at myself i lost my son at 26 years old last last year on march 17th from a heart attack while he was on a treadmill i have been running from dealing with it since my wife and i bought a towable 2 years ago we were snow we were snowbirding in pensacola florida obviously uh when it happened i was able to sell the home and i was about to sell the home and upgrade into a fifth wheel and out of emotion running through it would be the thing to do but with issues going on in the rv life and your video made me really think yesterday what do i want out of that lifestyle i am a diy type of guy but at 52 years old do i really want to be fixing and worrying about a rv all the time your honesty about rvs and life has made me change my thinking financially i could have bought a one ton and was set on an arctic fox and would have been fine so for my issues i'll keep what i have and just take short trips in the towable and try to enjoy each day as it comes. Thank you. So much BS on YouTube about RV life. That email uh, really, really touched me. Because sometimes we do things. Um, how do I put this? Um, sometimes we do things out of keeping up with the Joneses. Or out of. We don't understand the levers we pull, right? So this is a great lifestyle. I promote this lifestyle. I think this lifestyle is game-changing in, in people's lives. I, I believe that the building of memories and uh, the the building of, of, of family time away from all the bull crap we go through on a daily basis what we're pounded on by TV and by news and by politicians just to get out and do something different is amazing but we all have to come to that conclusion ourselves I always tell people don't rush into this lifestyle until you know what it's about you know look there are a lot of youtubers that work at dealerships like I do that will give you sunshine and rainbows and a couple of them have gone completely corporate, right? But reality is, it's, it is sunshine and rainbows, except for you need a toolkit and sense of humor to enjoy those sunshine and rainbows. And that's the most honest email I have received about a decision. And I can understand what you're going through. I mean, my wife sometimes doesn't... My wife went through a lot of hell. Have you heard of Sunline? They were in business for 40 years. Mine was a 2004. Quality was unmatched from what I had at Sunshine Solaris. So Sunline Solaris, the, you know, uh, it has the same problems everybody else did. They were a nice little trailer and a nice little motorhome. They built both. And uh, actually Forest River bought them. Uh, because the, word, the name Solaris was what they called the Sun Seeker with uh, the Mercedes chassis. Uh, for a while before they called it Sunseeker MBS. So not bad. Pretty good, pretty, uh, pretty good coach. 
Okay, next email. This was a great email. This is somebody that's, that's, I could tell was like, nah, there's no way I'm getting involved in this. There's too much going on. There's too much negative. And this email is like, hey, wait a minute. There's a guy not, there's a guy not telling everybody how glorious it is, but there's a guy that's not telling us that everything's garbage. Okay. Thank you very much for your effort and time. It's very appreciated. We're looking to spend 30000 or less, but open to more if it is the right fit. I'd rather spend less if I can, obviously. I did my research and got a 2012 Toyota Tundra Platinum that holds nine, hauls 9,200 pounds. That limits me, obviously, how big I can tow wise. We would like those wider bunks <clears throat> and probably a dinette slide. As the boys are small now, but only going to get bigger. Yeah, I watched my daughters grow like weeds. Uh, I saw the Apex Nano. If you don't, guys don't know what the Apex Nano is, uh, it is the um, a Coachman product. Coachman Apex Nano 208BHS. It's only 6,000 wet, but I'm really worried about new builds. Maybe a used would be the way to go. Then there is the issues of existing problems. Gonna get it inspected before I buy anything, even new. I know no one can drive that Tundra for the next decade with minimal issues. Just there are where was a travel trail with the same I wish there was a travel trail with the same level of quality that I could feel confident purchasing. Used Lance is new to me, so thank you for the getting that on my radar. I'd say seventy five hundred wet is all I'd feel safe towing, but I prefer closer to seven thousand. Because uh, we'll be going in the North Carolina mountains from time to time. I'm going to get distribu weight distribution hitch as well. I'll gl gladly like all of your YouTube videos or toss in some additional money for your time. Well, I didn't expect him to do that. but um, And he didn't because I don't necessarily need that. I, I would love support. If you guys gave me super chats, that would be awesome. I don't expect it, okay? Um, first off, I want to make this very clear that Coachman Apex is one of the better small travel trailers built right now that's affordable. Okay. In my opinion, I'd rather have it on my lot so I can sell it. I don't have it on my lot. I would prefer to have it on the lot because it's something that is actually well built. Um, but this is what I told him because I emailed him back. But I, I, the reason why I'm reading this one is I got seven others like this, seven other emails like this where people were worried about the quality of newer stuff built. So I want to cover something very interesting that I haven't said yet. Uh, I used to sell, back 15 years ago, I sold motorhomes, travel trailers, fifth wheels that were from the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Okay? The process of how they're built, okay, is I almost completely identical to how they're building it now. There are some differences because obviously technology, um, technology has has increased, right? Okay. But the aluminum sided trailers with the wood frame been built the same way for 47 years. The fiberglass uh, trailers have been built the same way for the last 26 years. 1998. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, we'll call it 25, 26 years. 1998. Ever since 1998, they've been pretty much built the same. Okay. So it doesn't matter... If you buy something that is 15 years old or buy something that's two years old, they're earthquakes on wheels. I know everybody hates that term, but that's literally what it is. So imagine if you were in your house and your house was on two axles driving down the road at 55 to 70 miles per hour. Would your house be as in good quality and good construction it is it as it is right now do you think the chances of something going wrong in your house are going to be greater at that speed or less at that speed 
Okay, and that's how I put it to people because I'd rather have you make up your own mind. In my professional opinion, it doesn't matter what year you buy. As long as you like the coach, it fits in your budget. And what I mean by fit in your budget is, guys, we can afford whatever we want in some cases. A lot of us, if we make six figures, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars a year, we can afford a six, seven hundred dollar payment if we really want to. But can you it, does it fit in your budget to where you can go camping and not break the bank to go camping? Can you go take multiple trips in a year instead of one weekend trip? Okay. What has changed dramatically is the cabinet quality. All the materials that they use. So if you compare my mom, my mom has my grandfather's old 1962 Continental travel trailer. It is all oak wood cabinets, not oak face oak cabinets all the way inside the things in 17 and a half foot travel trailer and it weighs 6400 pounds dry my brother's half ton truck barely tows that sucker because the tongue weight is so massive okay and back then they didn't put brakes on them right and my grandfather used to tow it with a cadillac deville <laughs> He's told me about stories of his engine catching on fire a few times while he uh, while he towed that sucker. So the things that have changed over the last several decades is number one, the automobile industry has gotten more and more uh, safe about towing, about building a vehicle that can tow. Now we have tow ratings. Now it's not a guess. You can actually look up your tow rating of your truck. Number two, there's been enough lemon laws and enough lawsuits throughout the last 30 years, 40 years, that now travel trailers, toy haulers, fifth wheels are all built lighter to accommodate the actual tow capacity of the vehicle. And lastly on this, and this is the most important part, they will never, and I mean never, be built to the quality of a house. And the reason why is because of this. They're recreational vehicles. That's a fact. They're not built to be lived in for 10 years. They're built for recreational use. What has happened is we've turned it into a lifestyle of full-time RVing. And what is not explained and needs to be explained more by more people is what it takes to make a rig full-time RV capable. <laughs> Do you see the prices going back to closer to pre-COVID range? Absolutely not. Never. It'll never get back to pre-COVID, ever. Used has already come down and corrected itself where it's going to be. It's going to sit where it sits. Uh... They can't. If it go, here's the problem. If prices go back to pre-COVID levels, then the economy, the RV economy, would completely crash. So we went through a, a we've gone through the bit, the second biggest collapse in the industry back in June of 2022. Most people don't talk about it, but the collapse of the RV industry started in June of 2022. And kind of carried over into about July, August of this last year. So about a year we went through the worst, worst period of the RV business ever. If they crash prices down to pre-COVID levels, it will kill the RV economy. Because you'll have a bunch of people that have good credit and money. They have good credit for a purpose. They don't get into really bad debt. If it crashes that hard, they're just going to turn their rig in back to the bank and say, I can't afford the payment anymore and claim hardship. Then we're going to run out of people to be able to sell RVs to because there's only, you know, there's only about 30% of the population of the United States and 15% of the population of Canada that have really great credit, really great RV credit that can buy the bigger more expensive items and if you crash them out 
Now you now now it's done for seven years. So we'll never go back to pre-COVID ever. It's where it is right now. This is the bottom. The next two months between this month, well, I'm going to say into April right now because all the weather's gotten crazy. But in the next two months will be the best buyer's market there has been. Okay. And it's only going to go back up from there because dealers aren't going to raise their prices outrageously, but they're going to raise their prices back up to profitability. Okay. Dealers can't keep losing money. I know of four guys personally that are shutting their doors at the end of the month because they ran out of cash. They sold a bunch of units, but they didn't sell any of the units they could make money on. They sold all the old stuff, took a big old loss. The factory's not helping at all, so they're going to shut their doors. So there's going to come a time where the camping worlds, the bishes, the lazy days, which lazy days filed bankruptcy. Not a, no, they're not closing. They're just doing a restructure. Okay, but the reality is, is these guys can't keep giving away the units back of what they paid for them because they're going to run out of money. So if you want to buy something, Shay, and you're worried about price, the next two months you're not going to get a better price. But that being said, okay, if you're not ready, then just spend more a little bit later. Be You have to be ready, willing, and able. If you're missing any of those three, wait until we have all three together. Okay? If you're spending more money next year because you had to wait, because you had a credit issue, maybe you want to put more down payment, maybe you're in the middle of something, maybe you're taking care of a, a family member full time right now, whatever that case may be, wait till that's over, spend a little more money. It's more worth it to spend a little bit more money when you're ready than it is to worry about, oh my God, I'm going to pay more next year. Oh well, be ready. It's not going to be astronomical like COVID. Okay? So just kind of keep that in mind, okay? What can one expect to pay on $127,000 MSRP at this time, in your opinion? That is a very vague question. It's uh, So it really depends on what product you're looking at. It also depends on the year model, depends on the rarity of it. You can ask me whatever you want, that one kid. Uh, so it's a Maya. It's all really up to relevant. So if it's an Arctic Fox by Northwood, expect to pay pretty close to full MSRP. Well, here's my personal opinion. It's a, I wouldn't buy one. With all the construction problems they're having, if I were in your shoes, I wouldn't pay more than 65% off MSRP because they're having that many bad problems. They're having construction problems up the rear end. All Grand Design fifth wheels, reflection, solitude, momentum, etc. So... I'll be honest, man. I I wouldn't I wouldn't direct you towards that. I mean, I, I I would offer them twenty grand back of what they paid for it, so that way they could actually you could actually like flip it into an auction or not be upside down in it really bad when you take it off the lot. Because dealers right now are really really paying attention. When you have a grand design fifth wheel trade and all the problems are circulating throughout the dealers, they're gonna start looking at it like. Ugh. Do we really want to take this and trade right now? And if we do, do we really want to pay full book? Or should we pay half book and send it to the auction and recoup our money? Sure, that one, kid. Shout out to you, bud. What is your opinion on the Winnebago travel trailer line? Garbage. Same garbage as Grand Design Fifth Wheels. Absolute garbage. They, It's a man. They have not addressed it, brother. They have not. Sister or brother, I'm sorry. They have not addressed it at all. There are YouTubers that have 2024s that are... One guy had his frame snap already on his momentum and he had it for three months. There's another guy that has a 2024 solitude where his floor and his wall by his bedroom are separating. 
where you could see daylight behind the bed. I mean, it's it's crazy out there with Grand Design right now. Can you tell us about Arduino? I don't know about Arduino. Are the Grand Design travel trailers... No. So, so far, here's the thing about Grand Design. The travel trailers, like specifically the Imagine and the Transcend, I haven't gotten word of any problems with them. They seem to be fine. Uh, pancakes, what? Okay. Um, so far, the travel trailers have not had... Um, the problems that the fifth wheels have they had your norm they have your normal rum in the mill problems so like if you're looking to buy an imagine i mean that's that's relatively smart you know same thing as a cougar or a flagstaff or a rockwood pretty good coach so i don't i wouldn't stay away from the travel trailers necessarily do you think alliance is moving in the right direction in your opinion are they doing things right for the future you know coley's cool I know Coley Brady pretty well when he was with Heartland, and uh, I think he's moving in the right direction. Um, I think they build a really good fifth wheel. Time will tell with the travel trailer. I mean, it's just like a first-generation electric vehicle. You kind of want to see and watch and see how it goes. So I kind of want to see and see and feel how the travel trailers go. Um, but the Paradigm, the, uh, and the, I forgot what the toy hauler is called. The fifth wheel toy hauler, uh, begins with a V. I think it's Valor. Uh, they're actually really good products. Uh, not too many issues with them. I don't know how to live forever. Oh, would you recommend an alternate in that price range? Yeah, um, shoot. Uh, if it's a toy hauler, I would recommend uh, Forest River Rogue Armored. Um, I would recommend, if you're on the West Coast, I would recommend anything by Genesis Supreme. Um, I would uh, also look at, uh, depending on how much you want to spend again, if you want to spend a little bit more, look at Riverstone. Uh, Riverstone, it, it makes a good fifth wheel toy hauler. Not the best looking layouts, but really well built rig. Um, God, I go Alliance. Uh, Alliance builds a really good fifth wheel toy hauler. Um, and the reason why I mention Alliance is Coley Brady was building one of the best toy haulers in the industry, Cyclone and Road Warrior, before his butt left Heartland. Wish I could kick him up his rear end. Uh, you're welcome, bud. Um, thank you for the super chat. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. So there are other fifth wheel brands having these. Yeah, Fletch Lives Matter. It was Fletch Live Daily. So yeah, there are. Um, XLR is okay. Um, frame issues. There's always frame issues within other brands. But it's a very small percentage, really microscopic. If you're looking for ideas or see how microscopic a lot of these Armageddon issues are, Liz Amazing's, or Amazing Liz, or whatever the hell she calls herself, her channel solely focuses on Armageddon. Okay, She, she only focuses on the negative, never anything positive. But if you look at the amount of video she has with the amount of cases she has, you'll see it's a very small percentage compared to what the market really builds. However, Grand Design has is the majority of the problem right now. And because I'm not in the factory and I haven't like gone and seen their process, and more than likely they're not going to give me their process... Um, I just don't foresee knowing what the real issue is until I get more information. On the podcast, I've asked all the grand design owners to please email me uh, the year, the make, the model number of the fifth wheel that they own by grand design that they're having frame or construction problems on. So I'm waiting on that. It's going to take a while to gather that information. It's not going to happen overnight. Hi, Bizbet. Frosty Fair, can you tell me which is better, Ram 1500 or Dodge Charger? Well, Ram 1500, my man, because I like to tow. 
and chargers don't tow very well. Henry RV, I've noticed that the new Columbus fifth wheels cabinets look cheaper than on my 2021. What do you think? I absolutely agree with you. They're trying to get lighter and cheaper. Um, they're also realize I think they're going away. I don't think they're going away away, but I think they're going to merge with uh, Flagstaff and Rockwood. So, Ida Willis, I would say the Lance Travel Trail line from 2017 to 2019 is absolutely badass. Uh, I would say any travel trailer by Lance built from 2014 to 2019 is really good quality stuff. They used a C-channel chassis, um, with, so they basically bolted the chassis together rather than welding it. Uh, thank you for the chat. Thank you for the uh, the chat, Blair. Really appreciate it. Um, 2020, 21, right after um, the big corporation bottom, eh, hit or miss. But the the 19s, 18s, they're they're really solid. I've sold them for years. They're good stuff. I wish I could sell them now, but they're just gotten too overpriced. Can I get a shout out? I need 50 subs. Okay. Surprise there isn't a class action lawsuit against the Grand Design. Well, again, the only way to get a class action lawsuit together is get people all together to show the similar problems. And, and that's what I'm trying to do is try to figure out where the issue is. I really blame Lippard more than Grand Design. But then again, the people I see with problems are overloading them and living full time. It's a combo of problems. It's, a, it's not just full timers. It's people in general. It, it, I've gotten emails from people that are... You know, use them four times a year. They don't live in them. And I don't blame Lippard. Lippard isn't the problem. Lippard isn't the problem. I'm telling you. If Lippard was the problem, the problem would be astronomical with everybody from Jayco to Keystone, Montana to Forest River, Riverstone to Forest River, Rockwood, Flagstaff to uh, Arctic Fox to everybody uses some form of Lippard Corporation. Lippard owns the super majority of all the chassis companies and parts companies. So Lippard is not the problem. Grand Design's the problem. What is your favorite game? Uh, baseball. We looking couple travel trail 30 feet. What best one to look at? We have 2019 Coleman 2623BH travel trailer like only uh, we own now. Um, you know, you can look anything from Rockwood, Flagstaff, Keystone Cougar, uh if you want to spend some big bucks you can go to anything by outdoor rv or northwood manufacturing um shoot you can go coachman freedom express coachman apex uh two really great units um you could go shoot um trying to think of another brand jaco eagle so I think I've covered everybody there, just about every major manufacturer. So there's a lot of good ones out there. A lot of good ones out there. Can I have a shout-out, please? I'll sub if you give me a shout-out. Well, Crazy Man Show, I shout-out everybody, bro, okay? All right. Let's move on to the next question. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. It's in my podcast. do 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 okay this is an example guys so i watch your video and this is good info i wish i had seen before i bought my fifth wheel i got 2024 keystone cougar 30 foot you mentioned a couple cougars uh were having the frame problems i checked on mine um and now hearing about frame flex scary do i need to worry about my cougar and i said no you don't really need to worry about your cougar because it's just so small. If it was a 2006 to 2007 Keystone Cougar or Montana, then I would worry. But since it's a newer one, I wouldn't worry about it too much or stress about it. It's mainly the bigger fifth wheels. Grand design, mainly. I'm not saying nobody else has had a problem here or there. I've heard of a couple here, a couple there. But the main problem is grand design. What do you think about Outdoor RV and Arctic Fox? Bitchin' products. They are awesome. Bitchin'. Um, just uh, amazing. Um, very overpriced, but they don't build a lot of them, so they get to hold the money. Uh, 
I'd rather go XL or Toy Hauler than anything by Grand Design right now. Are dealers willing to deal on a special order knowing that it will be sold? No. They're going to... They have to make the same profit margin whether you order something or take something off their lot. If you take something off their lot, they're more willing to negotiate with you, especially if it's a 2023, because it gets an aged piece of inventory off their lot. If it's a new order, they got to make their they got to make their profit margin. Usually, the profit margin a dealer has to make is usually between eight and nine percent, and that's total. That's finance, cash, trade. They have to make at least eight nine percent. Uh, what's the time for me right now? It's seven forty-five Pacific time. Are fifth wheel sales going down to the flex issue? Um, no, not really. I mean, they're down. They've been down before that. They've been down since August of two thousand twenty-two, before the frame flexing really became prevalent as big as it is right now. Even though the people that are having frame flex issues, frame flex issues, or construction issues, uh, have two thousand. Let's call it. You know, 2018, 19, 20 grand designs or a couple other here and there stuff. Um, James Badger, you're swearing into a nine-year-old. Well, sorry, boss. I wasn't swearing. Bitchin' is not a swear word. Ask your, ask your, well, hopefully you don't get your mouth washed out, but ask your dad or mom if they're my age or older, you know, what the word bitchin' means. It's like saying it's really cool, okay? Uh, it's not the same thing as you think. Um, so they, they've been having, um, it's been down because of interest rates and, and not just interest rates. Fifth wheels are down because people are not selling their homes. They used to sell their homes, uh, and then hop in a fifth wheel and go, and they're not selling their homes. That's the biggest reason why it's a full body is, is full body paint on fifth wheel worth it or not leaning toward the paradigm 3110 RL full body paint is worth it under two conditions number one if you're not going to garage keep it and you're in an area that has a lot of sun it is 100 percent worth it the second reason why is because it gives a better resale and trade-in value full body so when i get a full body paint motorhome that's clean good looking everything works I usually pay between seven and eight thousand dollars more than I do with one that doesn't. Okay, that's just personal because I'm going to get a little more money for it. So Jim Pell, it's totally worth it in my opinion. But you want to make sure that you get. Let, let, let's say the dealership is selling a ceramic material on it, so or like a you guys would call it a coating. Um, if you get a ceramic uh, coating on it, uh, that's even better. So like my biggest one, if a dealership you buy it from sells something called Silijet, highly recommend you get it. It's really good. I'm good, UFC life, been a while. Shout out. I'm not, guys, I can't shout out everybody, guys. Uh, will you say happy birthday to my sister Anita Maxwin? Uh, happy birthday to you, Anita Maxwin. It's not 2023, it's 2024. Yeah, no, I know. But if you buy a 2023, I'm good with that. Okay. Are you happy birthday? Yeah, I said happy birthday. XLR is really good. Say hi, Jay, please. Hi, Jay. Um, got it. Hold on. Will you say happy birthday to my sister? I already said happy birthday. And tell her I appreciate her being a fan. In fact, if you want, email me her email and I'll send her a birthday email. Shout out to Evelyn. Okay, cool. Hold on, guys. You guys are going... I'm not doing shout outs if I'm gay. Okay. Here we go. Have you ever looked at custom-built recreation by design campers? The traveling entertainment industry seems to have campers manufactured by them. I don't, uh, Henry. I haven't yet. Um, the only ones I know of... See, <laughs> in my giant RV days, when I worked for Giant RV in California, 
I sold a lot of people in Hollywood, makeup, producers, stuntmen, and a few celebrities. I'm not going to mention which celebrities. If they ever come out, they can tell you I sold them their rig. Um, but the majority of celebrities buy them from dealerships. Okay, here we go. Uh, best RV wax. I don't use wax. I just say go get a, a ceramic coating. The best ceramic coating out there is called Silajet for RVs. Uh, Giat, okay. UWU, what? Do you think switch it up from Grand Design because of the problems? Yes. I, I also think that if people just stop buying Grand Design fifth wheels, it will eventually wake them up and they'll change the stuff. Favorite song? That is uh, convoluted, but I'll give you my favorite classic rock song okay my favorite classic rock song uh is a uh, wayward son uh my favorite hair rock song is probably um uh anything by motley Crue lately <laughs> uh, okay thanks for telling me add a second battery to my cedar creek fifth wheel to work all the ga jacks you are absolutely welcome larry you're very much welcome Thank you for all the info. Looking for a truck camper. Is there any con to buying a Canadian Northern Light or Bigfoot? Looking for all fiberglass. Oh, boy, you're going to spend some big money. No, there's nothing wrong with Bigfoot. I sold Bigfoot. Sorry about the background noise. I just, The furnace just turned on in my trailer. Um, Bigfoot is a awesome camper. I sold those at Barber RV in Ventura, California. They are incredible there's nothing wrong getting one of those they're just heavy so make sure you the the, the question is sh is there a downside to buying the bigfoot the question is how much you're gonna have to spend on the truck to get it to actually move it around that's the real question thank you for all the info looking for a truck camper you already said that um are you christian yes i am uh few message you're so hot. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. Saying I'm hot. Thank you. I'll give you a hundred if you ply. For what, Ryan? Ryan Hobbs. Silajet. C I L A J E T. Um, what's his name? Um, late night guy. Um, uh, oh, I can't remember. But they only sell it at dealerships. Cap. Okay. You're so hot. Okay. I'm looking for new ever. I am wondering what type everyone recommended. You know, I, I, every brand is okay. Every brand has their issues. No brand is perfect. Even Airstream isn't perfect. Um, you know, it just depends on what you want to do and what you want to spend, Braxton. That's, that's the biggest thing. You got to start out with what you want to spend. Okay, then you got to find a floor plan you like. And then third, come to me, email me at levingstonrvservices at gmail.com. If you go to any of my videos, uh, you can contact me through social media. You can send me an email. Uh, and then let me know what you like. Okay, how much I want to spend, what floor plan I like. And then I can actually give you some recommendations. Boy, somebody really thinks I'm hot. Do you hear the song Kings of the Day? I don't hear it right now, but I like it. My favorite rock is heroin rock. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm Christian. Cap. Everybody says cap. Everybody keeps saying cap. Smoke a blunt. Don't know what the hell that means. Okay. Everybody's calling me cap and clown. That's okay. Self-growth must work at a dealership or a factory because it keeps calling me cap. Are there many toy hauler travel trailers built out west with slides? Yes, there is. Uh, Genesis Supreme RV is the main builder out west. And then you have uh, Forest River Shockwave, Sandstorm, and um, Stealth. I don't know what Gwat is. I don't know what Gwat is. Gwat is. Say geese, okay. Uh, can you be my mans? <laughs> I don't know about that. I said it too fast, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom, here we go. You selling things, yes I sell RVs. Do you sing, yes I do. 
Um, okay, do manufacturers decide which dealers they want to sell the rigs and can dealers decide what they want to sell? Yes and no. It has to be available in the market and sometimes manufacturers don't have a choice because dealers have more power over what they carry than manufacturers have choice. Okay. Dude, I'm so glad I found someone normal streaming. There's like Fury's trunks and a bunch of crazy people right now. <laughs> Gary Morrill, there. I don't think you know my dad, brother, because my dad's been uh, gone for a long time. Um, I'm married. Can you say my name? Oh, God, what? Would you rather have unlimited bacon, but no more games, or games, unlimited games, or but more games? I don't know what that means. Uh, can I be your? Can you be my Valentine? Dad, dad. <laughs> Are you Donald Trump's child? Oh, hell no. Am <laughs> I Donald Trump's child? No. That's okay, Gary. I There are people who say... My dad passed away in 2002. No, 2003. April 7th, 2003 is when my dad passed away. He passed away right after the Angels won the World Series. Do, I, do you follow any YouTuber Rivers channels? Not really, because I think they're boring. The only guy I really watch is, often I'll watch, I used I don't watch him anymore, but I used to watch watch Josh the RV Nerd. Uh, I don't watch him anymore just because he's gotten a little corporate and he's just not himself like he used to be. Uh, I'm not Joe Biden's son either. Wow. Who do you think will win the Super Bowl? Uh, Sam I am not on Grinder. No. Yeah, you know, Lippard Ground Control. What? What? What do you got? Uh, random or not? What do you got there? People commenting tonight. Go Chiefs. Okay. KCBVFA random or not? What, what what do you what do you want? Looking to buy a 315 Pack 12 Wolf Pack, a Wolf Pack fifth wheel. Is that what you want to do, brother? You want to add the leveling system? Would I be better off with a 30 foot toil or travel trailer similar length fifth wheel? No, that fifth wheel fifth wheels are nice, man. And if you want to add the ground controller to it, it's like five or six grand for the kit. It's supposed to be pretty easy. I haven't personally done it yet. Um, nobody adds it because we, when I order wolf packs, I order them with the electric stabilizer in the back. I don't order them with the, uh, with the leveling system. They're just pre wired for it. Uh, we love our 2015 Lance 1172 double slide, been full time in it for two years. I got to give you credit. I would not full time in a truck camper, but that's awesome. Lance makes great, great, uh, truck campers. Are you happy? Absolutely. Are you George Washington? Jeez, Louise. Uh, what percent of MSRP can I expect to get off when I buy an RV or toy hauler? Andrew, 1183. It really, really depends on what brand. Every brand has a different markup. Arctic Fox has a smaller markup than Winnebago Towables. Um, Jayco has a bigger markup than uh, the majority of Forest River. So that really depends. Uh, what you need to look at is, the best way to look at it is shop a 200 mile radius from where you live and look at what people are pricing stuff on RV Trader, okay? And it also depends on what year you wanna buy. If you wanna buy a 2024, you're gonna pay nine, maybe 10% total profit. They have to make 10%, nine, eight to 10% total profit on the unit. Uh, to stay in business. If you're going to buy 2023, they're going to take a loss. So that's how you kind of go look at it. Would I... Full moon, the freaks come out. <laughs> Do I like the Chiefs? Eh. Do I like the 49ers? Eh. How's my day? Eh, it's pretty good. Do you like chicken? Sure. Uh, thank you for the information you gave me. It's a big help for my decision that I was able to make. I was trying to make. You're very much welcome, Shay. Really appreciate you coming on and being supportive of the channel. Thank you again for the super chat, guys. Um, 
Am I in an RV now? Yeah, I'm in a travel trailer. Uh, hard to find a forest river with five damn slides. <laughs> They're not. There are no fifth wheel toy haulers with five slides, man. Max is four. I think some of these people work for Grand Design. Stupid comments. Oh, the people that put the cap in there. They're the ones that work for Grand Design. I, I've gotten attacked by Grand Design, apparently. I don't know about it, but I had a guy that personally, like, talked to me. Alexis LaRose, will you say my name? Okay. What time is it there where you are? It is now 8 p.m. What's the gas per mile on that thing? Uh, usually everybody gets between 8 and 15 miles to a gallon towing or, or doing motorhome. Wow, there's a lot of folks in here. Okay, well, it's past my hour. Wait, do you think Grand Design is getting a bad rap because the YouTubers with the problems have... No, it's just more prevalent. It would have eventually gotten... It was going to get a bad rep with dealerships anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, Grand Design did it to themselves. It was going to happen no matter what. It was just more, more prevalent because of YouTubers. No, you're very much welcome, boss. I, I really appreciate all of you. Everybody that has been this live, I really appreciate it. Thank you for the sub. Um, you're getting ripped off, bro. Switch to electric. Okay. Oh, I always have trolls, Karen. There's trolls all the time. All right, guys. So that's the end of my hour. Thank you so much uh, for uh, being here. Uh, remember to email your questions to LevingstonRVServices at gmail.com. And uh, I do need moderator. <laughs> anyway, uh, next Saturday, 7 p.m. Pacific time, we'll be live again. Have a good one. Good stuff, Karen. You'll enjoy it. Love you too, Larry. Have a good one.